Pick the most valuable. Costume jewelry is the most overlooked object, I think, in the world of art and antiques and collectibles. People are overlooking costume jewelry. They think, oh, it's just junk, and they're throwing it out. Sue, where are you, Sue? Right here. How'd you acquire this bracelet? Here's my mother's. Your mother's? Do you ever wear it? No. Why? What's the deal, Sue? You don't like this bracelet? Well, so it just hangs around all the time, but you never wear it? It's, it's, a, little much. it's, a, little, it's a little too much bling for you, Sue? Okay, it doesn't want to open. Does it open? You've had this clasp open. It's got a maker's mark on it. It's got a clasp that doesn't want to open. And these are synthetic stones. Technically synthetic, right? <laughs> so these particular stones are synthetic stones. See, it opened. You badmouth the piece long enough, it says, all right, I'll open for you. <laughs> it has a safety clasp. That's what's a riot. Some of these pieces of costume jewelry have as many accessories and elements as a regular piece of fine jewelry. So a safety class on a piece like this indicates that in its time period, it was something special, right? So they're supposed to, supposed to simulate, of course, sapphires. These are Austrian crystals, colored pieces of glass that are faceted cut. Right? And then these actually have a fleur-de-lis on both sides and a bar in the middle. And then it just repeats the pattern. Do you have a necklace? Do you have a brooch? Do you have earrings? Anything that matches? Just the bracelet? This would come in a set with others. So maybe, I don't know, your mother got the bracelet and her sister got the earrings. And, you know, that happens in families. You know, we trade and such. This particular piece is a good example, probably sometime into the 1950s, and value on this piece anywhere between $85 and $95 for costume jewelry. It's very high quality. It's very well made. Do you, so you don't wear it. So if you saw that piece of costume jewelry, you'd say, okay, well, I know it's costume. And the way you might know this piece is costume is by the way in which each individual setting is put together. It's actually looped together on the back. 14 karat. Did she wear it all the time? She wore it a lot, right? No. She didn't? It's quite dirty that she didn't wear it a lot. I wear it a lot. Okay, you wear it a lot. Okay. Well, the only... You don't have to do a lot of things. I mean, you can do something simple. Take a new toothbrush and some white toothpaste, Colgate, for example. You can give it a scrub. Nothing's going to happen to it, right? I want you to check the prongs. That's for all of you. If you have a faceted cut ring, I want you to check the prongs about once a year. And I want you to, in fact, make sure none of them are loose. You can also listen to it. If you hear it, you know, you can actually hear it moving around. Yours is not moving around. It looks fine. But if you want to get the dirt out, it'll sparkle more. Or you can go to a jeweler and ask them to put it in an ionic cleanser or ask them to clean it. You can use jewelry cleaner. That's what all the GIA certified jewelers suggest. Jewelry cleaner, not my toothpaste method. But, you know, do what you want. Anyway, that particular piece is indeed a sapphire with diamonds. It looks like there's probably um, total carat weight of diamonds, probably a half to seven, excuse me, to 75 points of diamonds. So that's between a half carat and about a three quarters of a carat of diamonds. If you added up all those small diamonds, they're very nice. They have a lot of fire, nice sparkle. The sapphire is quite nice as well. I would probably say that the sapphire is probably about a half carat too, maybe a little less. Value on your ring, about $500. It's beautiful, wear it in good health. I'm sure your sister would want you to. So you bought this in an online auction, okay? So this particular piece is from the 1980s. The bows are the tip off. Those little bows are pretty popular then. And this particular piece says 925. So it's set in sterling silver. So you have all of these sapphires, you think, and they're set in sterling silver. Are you going to set sapphires this big in sterling silver? Probably not. Okay. Why do you think they're sapphires? Uh, yeah, okay. I think they are synthetic sapphires. I don't think they are naturally developed sapphires. They do have very small diamond chips and they are set in sterling silver. What'd you pay online for this? $22. Oh, well that was a deal. I would probably put this piece somewhere around 400. But the sapphires are not naturally developed sapphires, okay? And the sterling silver is usually the tip off. It matches the ring that you have on your hand. So you said, well, now did you buy the ring online too? 
Okay, so the ring is something different from that, but you said, oh, well, the blue is good. And for, that, for 20 bucks, that's a real deal. That's a good deal. Heidi, how are you? Tell me about the cat's eye tourmaline. You don't know. Oh, gosh, don't talk to me. I don't know. <laughs> You've got a GIA certified report. Excellent, excellent. GIA certified report. Tell you some information about the piece. It's always good. It's in this box. This is the box that you got when you got the GIA or Gemologist Institute of America report. It comes in a box, <laughs> okay, with this particular piece because they have to send you back the piece, correct? Okay, so here's your piece. How did you acquire it? Can you speak up for me so everybody can hear you? Online auction. Online auction. So you bought this tourmaline, it's called the cat's eye tourmaline, and an online auction with diamonds set in gold. Yeah. Right? I bought one now. He bought it, but it's yours. So it's for you? Yes. Do you wear it all the time? I never had it before. What do you mean you never had it before? He just showed it to me today. He just showed it to you today. And we've been married 45 years. You've been married 45 years and he just showed you this ring today? Where's he squirreling all this stuff, Heidi? What are you doing? Check it out. Go looking around the house. He has a safe that I don't have. The oh, he, he has a safe for. that she doesn't have the keys for. Oh. He knows. I don't know. You're in trouble now. <laughs> trouble. It's gorgeous. How much did you pay for it? 600. 600. Did you get a bargain? You got a big bargain. How much was the bargain? What? She wants it. She's putting her hand out like, I want it. I want it, Dr. Lori. Give me my ring. You're not getting that ring. You're not getting in that safe. You better go looking around your house. What are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to be the queen of your domain. What do you mean he has a safe you don't know about? I am not that curious. You're not that curious. Are you curious now? Oh, yeah. Wonder what else is in the safe? Isn't your brain going, what's in the safe? What's in the safe? I wonder what else he's doing. Well, maybe he's taking care of you. Maybe he's thinking, I'm squirreling this stuff away. Make sure everything's good. She doesn't need to know. Because you're already like, I want the ring. He might be thinking this might be a little, you know, savings account over here in the safe. What about another girlfriend? Another girlfriend? No, look, he loves you. What are you talking about, other girlfriends? 45 years? Well, stand up, let me see. Stand up. Let me see what 45 years married looks like. You stand up too, let's see. It's actually 46. It's actually 46 years married. He's correcting her over here. Ah, uh, I think you're okay. <laughs> No, you're not older. You're much younger. By 34 years, easy. <laughs> don't come to my table. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't want anybody to bang the table, that's all. But you're a sweetheart, and I'll hug you when I come down there. That's a gorgeous tourmaline. It's a cabochon. It's carved. It's not faceted cut. The diamonds alone, do you know the carat weight for all these diamonds? Somewhere about three or four total carat weight, I would say. Let's say it's five total carat weight. I'll go a little bit high, probably. Um, the gold content, is it marked? No, but it's in fact, it's 18 carat. It's 18 carat, and you purchased it online. Value on this piece is going to be within the three to $5,000 range, and that's probably conservative. Okay, I'm not throwing it to you. I'm putting it right here in this, near this box. I'm putting it right there. It's beautiful. I like when they're marked. Okay, but again, you can tell when the gold is 18 karat. Just by touching it, when you touch a lot of it, you see it. Um, three to 5,000 is conservative. That's as far as I'm willing to go without more information about those diamonds. The tourmaline is that by itself. So, beautiful. Do you wear this ring? This ring is, oh my goodness, this ring. Do you go to a jeweler and do you have the prongs checked regularly? Once a year, I want you to go once. These are new prongs. Two years, Two years ago. You modified the inside as well. Who did? The jeweler did. The jeweler did what? So there was no hole before? There was a tiny hole. Tiny hole. So what did the jeweler do that you didn't like? Because you're looking at me like the jeweler did something I didn't like. He shaved off the inside shanks of your setting, right, of the platinum. So it's well balanced. So now it's just sort of sitting inside there. Before, when your grandmother had it, it sat up on those shanks. Is that what you're saying? I see. Okay. All right. So this particular piece is platinum. The platinum setting alone is worth about $700. Just the platinum. If there was no diamond in there, just the platinum is worth that. The diamond now is based on clarity, color, carat weight. 
Okay, so the same way I'm looking at these particular pieces and saying, okay, what's the quality of those stones, whether they're synthetic stones or they're naturally developed stones, the diamond has to be identified and um, evaluated based on those other factors. Okay, so the stone is how big? You just had it done. Under a carat, I would say. Oh, definitely under a carat. Okay. Probably 25 points. Okay, so it's, it's more than a quarter of a carat, because I've got diamonds on my hand that are more than a quarter. I would say that this is probably closer to a half carat. You know, I don't think it's 25 points at all. Well, I can show you. I will show you. <laughs> Here's. These, each individual stone in my ring is 25 points, or a quarter of a carat. Yours is bigger than that. Really? So I would say it's closer to a half carat. The individual ones, there are, eight in my, there are eight, I think, or ten stones in my ring, which are all a quarter of a carat to make two carats. Yours is at least as big as two of my stones. Okay, so just, just, just basically carat weight to carat weight, just comparing that. I'm not going to compare your weight to my weight, okay? <laughs> But this particular example is very good. This particular example, it's a very, very fiery diamond. It's in good condition. And you can see that that hole making it bigger lets more light in so it sparkles even more. Now, in terms of quality for the half carat, if it's a very, very high quality diamond, even though it's a small, even though it's a small diamond, will have value. Okay? And most uh, jewelers will tell you, you know, buy the cut rather than the color and some of the other elements. Value on this ring with the $750 of the 7750 of the platinum, I'd say this ring is worth somewhere around uh, $1,200. It's a nice ring. So when I picked this ring up, I thought, OK, it kind of looks to be heavy enough to be platinum, but I got to look for the mark. So it's probably not platinum, it's probably sterling, but sterling would be, even be good. Then as I picked it up and held it and got it closer, before I looked at marks, I thought, okay, well, it kind of feels more like white gold. So I'm looking inside here, and what I have is no marks, right? Did you find any marks? The woman that sold it to you said it tested for what? Palladium. Palladium. Okay. So... She tested it, and then she sold it to you. Yeah. And you bought it in a thrift store? No, it was on eBay. It was on eBay. Yeah. All right. So why would you want a signet ring of somebody else's initials? Well, Since your S is for Shannon. My maiden name is B. Okay, your maiden name is B, and you like it. Do you wear it? I do wear it. Okay, so it's unmarked. Have you had any trouble with um, hap anything happening in your skin since you've worn it? Because you can't really believe, oh, they say it's this, they say it's that. You've got to kind of test it out yourself. Okay. So you've had no trouble with it. Did you pay more than $200 for it? It's worth about $100. What did you pay for it? 99 99 Okay. So um, signet rings are one of the things, and monograms are one of the things a lot of people talk about. Oh, if it's monogrammed, it's worth nothing. Dealers will call that dirty because it's not your monogram, right? But if you have a famous person's monogram, like, you know, O for Oprah, and it came from Oprah's yard sale, well, heck, that's a good monogram, right? So think about monograms, and while it doesn't bother some people, it does bother others. If you have a piece that's monogrammed, but it's of a good material, a sterling silver, a platinum, something else, don't focus on the monogram because you have a good material, and that's an important tip. So you want to make sure that, yes, well, you might have something monogrammed or have the opportunity to buy something monogrammed. Don't just, you know, discount it because it's not your particular letters of the alphabet, right? Thanks, Shannon. So you paid retail. That's not terrible. The Hampton Watch Company. How'd you acquire this? Okay. So what time period do you think it's from? So he didn't use this watch while he was working on the railroad. Is that right? That's too bad. This is a nice watch and you could use it when you're working on the railroad. <laughs> the guy who he took it to said, if I fix it, it will devalue it. What does that really mean? That's code for, I'm afraid to touch this 23 jewel watch. I can't speak for the guy. Maybe he wasn't afraid, but I would think he's afraid. <laughs> Afraid to touch it because it's a 23 jewel Hampton railroad grade highly accurate watch. It's in a uh, 14 karat gold case. It's got 
It dates to about 1900 to about 1905, just like you thought, and value on this watch is just about $1,200 to $1,500. If he touched it and he ruined it, once he got in there, all of a sudden, he doesn't want to pay you $1,500 or more because he's ruined your watch. It's very nice. That does not include the fob. The watch chain is another $200, also in gold. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. If you notice when you turn this to open it, this comes off, which is correct, and then there is information about how many jewels are in it. You can even see some of the jewels here, and you can also see the gears that are moving. It says 23 jewels right on it. Railroad grade watches are high in jewels.